This Buena Vista Beaver team has come afire. Fasten your seatbelts, here we and go. And the Beaver students rush the floor. Buena Vista wins! Thank you, thank you very much. I am Tim Gallagher. I work uh, in the uh, Development and Alumni Communications Office at Buena Vista. I'm a Buena Vista graduate, as is my wife and three of our children. Uh, I have been pleased to be back at Buena Vista for the past four years, and I'm joined tonight by my colleagues. Robin Wissink is here with us. Brandy Myshide is here with us. Seth Shadow is here with us, and Joan Canty is, is with us. Great, great to have uh, folks from the Alumni and Development Office with us. Uh, Sarah Johnson, a colleague of mine in Alumni Relations, had a lot to do with putting this together as well. I would like to uh, introduce the person that really is behind the planning for uh, all of this and the planning for all of Buena Vista Athletics. It's Amy Mayer. Amy is currently in her 10th year at BVU. She helps uh, direct the Hall of Fame committee uh, and has helped plan uh, this event. And so I would just like to ask her to step forward. One night of the year that she's not directly working with several hundred Beaver student athletes. Amy? Thank you, Tim, um, and thank you to all of you for being here tonight. Um, I also just want to take a quick second and thank a couple of our staff members who are instrumental in making this event what it is tonight. So um, Ryan Harder, Stephen Phelps, and Tim Gallagher, thank you so much for what you guys do um, for this event. This is one of my favorite events every year. Um, it's a great opportunity um, to honor those who paved the way for so many BVU students, um, including those who represent the Beavers today. Um, speaking of those that paved the way um, and have been honored previously, um, I'll ask if you'll raise your hand when I call out your names um, of those BVU Hall of Famers that are with us tonight. So to start it off, Coach Mard Willison. <laughs> Cheryl Book, <laughs> Chanel Finzen, <laughs> Jackie Jerkovitz, <laughs> Libby Kestel, <laughs> Libby. Lori Siggins McCombs, <laughs> Pam Nelson, Jill Petzel. Lori Stern, <laughs> Shelley Barr Terhark, <laughs> Jill Walquist. <laughs> All of those I just listed were either inducted individually or as members of the 1984 National Championship Beaver softball team. We also have with us Courtney Berg, <laughs> Eric Bertelson and Andrea Schmidt. So thank you to all of you. Raise your hand if I missed anyone. Yeah, I said, I said Libby. Oh, you didn't, oh, and Joy, Joy, sorry. <laughs> My bad, I forgot, it's, it's right here, it's right here. <laughs> Joy Johnson Gross. Um, I would also like to introduce our coaches that are here tonight. Um, so if you will also raise your hand when I call your name. Um, coaches Joe and Annika Powell with men's and women's golf. <laughs> Coach Jesse Juarez with men's and women's track and field. <laughs> coaches Sarah Richardson and Jared Sotello with softball. Um, Coach Trevor Johnson, men's basketball, I think is coming still from practice. So, um, Coach Nate Hanner 
and um, your reigning American Rivers Conference Baseball Coach of the Year, Steve Eady, with baseball. And then Coach Janet Berry, who is currently with our volleyball program, but has served in many capacities for BVU, including longtime women's basketball. Coach. And if the American Rivers Conference had a president of the year, I could introduce Brian Lunsmeyer in that way. It is my honor to welcome President Lunsmeyer, an NCAA Division III all-conference student athlete himself. For 20 years, President Lunsmeyer has been a picture of dedication and commitment to BVU. When he wasn't in the lab or in the classroom during his time as a professor of biology, he was in our bleachers, watching every kind of competition our student athletes competed in. That hasn't subsided in the years since he became president. It is awesome to see him supporting us in every, everything from football and softball, to cheer and dance, to tennis and golf, and much more. We are grateful to have our biggest Beaver fan behind us every step of the way. Please help me welcome President Brian Lensmeyer. Thank you, Amy. Such a busy week, really the best week, homecoming. It's wonderful seeing you all here tonight, supporting your teammates, your coaches, your alma mater, and its programs. I know I missed Jason because I was busy in the lab trying to get a degree while he was playing here. But I did get to meet Ben and Jen and Sean while they were students here. And I do remember some of their competitions. Unfortunately, I also didn't see the 1983 NCAA runner-up Beavers softball team. If you'd have just scheduled a game in Wilmer, Minnesota, I would have been there to watch. <laughs> but I felt your presence here at BVU. You as a team set the bar extremely high. You helped set the stage for the 1984 team to win the national championship. I've see, also seen a second generation from this team. Cody Voga is a student I had in class. Jolene's son, he played soccer here. And Joy Gross's daughter, Peyton, I watched help win the Beavers win a conference softball championship just in 2022. For me, as a professor, it was always a great way to relax, watching student athletes compete. It also allowed me to see them grow and allowed me to further connect with students, not only the biology students I had, but students from all majors. I was honored each morning to take a look at the web page. We did have a web page at that point, <laughs> and look at the box scores. And I always tried to make it a point to find out and point out people in class who'd had a good game. And that really went a long way to building relationships with students. It's something that's really important to all of us, that every student here has a great experience. I do know what it's like to take a book on the bus on the way to a competition. I didn't say I read it, but I took it with me. And I know what it's like to battle through illness and through injuries. The fact that you are all here tonight, and especially the inductees, shows that you excelled, that you were leaders, that you were leaders of your peers, and we're proud of you. We're proud of your coaches and for what you did for Buena Vista University. And for those of you who are here tonight supporting your loved ones, your family members, your close friends, this night is also special for you because those athletes wouldn't be here tonight if it wasn't for you. There's no bigger um, supporter here uh, than all of you supporting your family members throughout this, this journey. So I'm humbled and honored to share time with you tonight, this weekend. Please be sure to enjoy this moment because it is special. Congratulations to all of you and welcome to the BVU Hall of Fame.
Now we'll take a quick moment uh, for some prayer and reflection. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us together this weekend in friendship, peace, safety, and good health. Bless those who play a role in all that nourishes us this evening, from the farmers to the production workers, to the dedicated staff who have worked to prepare this meal. We seek your continued grace and blessings as we extend our gratitude for the experiences and friendships we share at this special place of learning, Buena Vista University. Under your guidance, Lord, may we continue to grow in your example, living your word and serving you by first serving others. We praise you and we give thanks in your name. Amen. Our first inductee tonight is Jason Evers. Jason is third in scoring in men's basketball with 1,678 points. He's in the top 10 in rebounding as well. As a junior, the Beavers, with Jason at the helm, finished 13 and 12. It was the first time in 16 years that the program finished over 500. As a senior, Jason averaged 21 and nine. Jason works for Wells Fargo. That's who he's been with since his first week after graduating from Buena Vista. His family at Huxley consists of his wife, Emily, and their children, Kemper and Penn. Penn. I present to you tonight, Jason Evers. Seven, junior from Clarkson, Nebraska, number 50, Jason Evers. Hey, this is Brendan Riley. I'm Don Walls. I've known Jason since he was a freshman here at BV. I'm John Dukes. Buena Vista graduate in 1997. Played basketball with him for three years of my college career. So I met Jason actually through my wife, Lisa Schuler at the time, and Emily Evers were best friends. And so I felt obligated to hang out with Jason through that relationship between those two. So basically I was forced into it. Jason came into college as a freshman, uh, pretty raw. The points that he had throughout his career, he was uh, a, just a good basketball player in general. Fourth inside gives it to Evers. Oh! Because he's one of the best players that uh, Buena Vista has ever had. I think he's probably still in the top three uh, of scoring. And he was all conference uh, three years. And he had to play under multiple coaches. I mean, learn different systems and and different ways to play with people. And I think he overcame all of that and and was a tremendous player. Jason's that, that guy that he's a, you know, six, seven, six, eight. You know, you would think of him as a center, but he's like today's game where he could stand outside the three-point line and shoot and he just had great touch. Evers, Evers hits a three-point shot. You know, I'm gonna throw him the ball as much as I can because he's gonna score for me. He was a guy you can count on. He's gonna shoot the ball, he's gonna make it. Really good round ball player. I think he would agree that uh, a lot of his points came off of my assists, but even more of his career rebounds came off of my misses. He was just a good person, like in general. He was a good teammate. He wanted to win just as much as I did. He worked hard. I think I started uh, trying to figure out how to get him at least nominated uh, for the Hall of Fame 15, 20 years ago. I started putting in uh, requests on the nomination form. Last year at uh, Buena Vista Homecoming, I, I wore a Jason Evers for the Hall of Fame shirt and then I uh, ended up wearing it the whole weekend. I may have trolled the, the Buena Vista Athletics uh, Facebook page quite a bit. The person that should get credit is Jason Evers. Uh, he put the ball in the basket a lot of times uh, at uh, Buena Vista. I'm happy it happened because, I mean, for six foot eight guys, their longevity is really not that long. And you know, we got him in before he uh, passed away, which is great. Uh, Jason was a good friend, great teammate. We immediately clicked and had a lot of good times when we were in school together. There's times though, I remember we went over to his hometown and we played in a tournament over there and stuff. And you could tell that everybody knew who he was, you know. He was a standout ball player and stuff. It's well deserved. Um, great basketball player. It, it's been a long time coming for him. Congratulations, Jason. Sorry I can't be there, but uh, I'm guessing that there's a room full of people all dressed up and you're wearing a unbuttoned flannel and a backwards grubby hat. Big man, Evers, 
It's well deserved, it's a long time coming. I wanna to say to you, congratulations to you, my friend. Hope you have a great time. Congratulations and enjoy your special day. Congratulations, Jason. Well deserved, uh, long time coming. Proud to be your friend. I'm proud to be a godfather to your son. You're an incredible father, incredible husband. And of course, you were a really good basketball player 100 years ago. And I'm glad they finally decided to uh, give you the respect you deserve and put you in the Buena Vista Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Huh. Hey buddy. It's good to see you combed your hair for that interview too. That was awesome. Um, I think they're having me go first so I can set the bar pretty low as far as speeches go. So. Um, not great at this. I did take some notes this afternoon in lieu of writing an actual speech, but um, the good thing is I haven't changed at all. I look exactly like I did in the pictures, you know, 25, 30 years ago, however long it was. But um, I would like to thank my family, um, my dad and my stepmom, Richard and Glenda Evers, my mother, Gloria, my little dude, Penn, who is here. Um, he's pretty excited, by the way. My oldest son, Kemper, I do want to point out, he graduated from Ballard of Huxley last year and he is now in the Air Force, so he can't be here, but he's serving our great country, so very, very proud of him. Wish he could be here, but proud of what he's doing right now. So my wife, Emily, who, if you don't know, um, what were you, uh, she was a freshman when I first met her. I was a senior. She was a student manager on the basketball team, which is how we met. So. When I called the first time to ask her out, she thought I was calling to ask for a key to the cage so I could shoot her out. <laughs> but after about an hour, I got around to it, and smartly, she said yes, and the rest is, the rest is history. But, um, and then obviously, John and Lisa Dukes, BB grads, our best friends for years and years and years to do anything for them. As John said, godparents to um, our oldest son, and, and uh, can't thank you guys enough. John did say when he came home last year from homecoming weekend, he's like, you're either getting in or they are never going to consider you. <laughs> so I guess I appreciate it. So I didn't know what to think. I was like, you know, it's a coin flip, but um, <clears throat> try to keep it short. Um, basketball brought me to BV. Never heard of it until I was a senior in high school. I grew up in middle Nebraska. I think the only Iowa schools that's at Iowa State I, I had ever heard of were Briarcliff and Morningside. Got trouble in study hall. My coach threw a questionnaire down on the desk, said, fill this out. It was for BV. Filled it out. They came and watched the game. My mom and I drove over to visit, and I'm like, great place. Far enough from home where my parents can't just sneak over and say hi, but they kind of have to let me know. So I was like, this is perfect. So, and really, the rest of history, it's kind of crazy how, how it came about. Um, if it wasn't for that moment when it came to this great place, met my wife, current family, and you know, the rest of history. So um, I was told I need to tell at least one story about basketball. Um, freshman year, one of my first of my three head coaches, by the way, first day of practice, coach, we come in, he's saying, hey, no freshmen are making varsity this year. I'm like, what? How do you, how do, you do that? You've never even seen us practice. And a couple weeks later, we have an inter-squad scrimmage in front of the campus, and the lowly JV folk beat the varsity, roughed them up pretty good. So next thing you know, three of the freshmen are on varsity, and the rest is, rest is history, as I like to think. So, um, But it worked out very well. It was a good challenge, which we figured out later that's what he was doing. He challenged us, we kind of came to, and, and it really helped off. So I do appreciate that. Um, I do want to point out, though, even though I had three coaches in three years, a bunch of change, one thing that never changed is every time I got the ball, I really liked the like to shoot, so that did not change. Even after college, if I get it, you might want to go rebound because I'm going to shoot it. Um, <clears throat> lastly, I want to thank those who did vote me in. I really, really appreciate it. Um, Hall of Fame, you know, I think back, it wasn't something that you think about while you're playing, but now that I'm a part of this and, and, and being inducted, it's fantastic, and I'll never forget it, and, and I really appreciate it. Appreciate everybody. So. If I didn't thank everybody, sorry, thank you guys. But that's it. Thank you very much. Now on to Ben Lichtai. Ben Lichtai 
liked Buena Vista as an option because he had a strong feeling that he could help a young coach, Steve Eady, build a winning program. Ben came from Bishop Garrigan High School in Algona, and he sought to make an immediate impact for the Beavers. He knew what he was talking about. He started all 157 games of his career. He showed quickly that he could hit and hit and hit. He still ranks in the top five in many offensive categories, and he finished his career with 193 hits, the most in school history at the time. As a freshman, the team was picked to finish toward the bottom of the conference, uh, but they topped everybody else in the regular season. And Ben said that Nick Beard, who was a Hall of Famer and a senior, gave Ben an example to follow in leadership. And so Ben put that to work for himself as a leader in the program. Ben is one of two beavers in his family, uh, as his older brother Sam also wore the navy and gold. Ben and his wife Kelly reside in Medfield, Massachusetts with their daughters Annie, Natalie, and Molly. Ben is also a leader at work. He's an optometrist and the owner and operator of Licktie Family Eye Care. We'll now watch a video about Ben Licktie. I am Steve Eady. I'm the head baseball coach, uh, entering my 24th year, and was Ben Licktag's baseball coach. My name is Ryan Berg. I'm the 612 principal currently at Storm Lake St. Mary's High School. Back during Ben's playing days, I was one of the assistant coaches at uh, Buena Vista. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Lensmeyer. I'm the president of Buena Vista University. Ben was a very versatile player for us. He spent his time playing in the outfield, first base. And of course, as everybody reminds me, we even caught him. Seeing him as a catcher, which kind of always threw people off guard a little bit, you don't see too many left-handed catchers. To my knowledge, it's the only guy that's played catcher as a left-hand thrower in, in our school's history. He could adapt and he could make things work, even if it wasn't maybe the traditional way of doing things. And he was ideal to be in that kind of a role because the catcher is always a, a great leader. But he was so good that he could, he could do whatever it took. And wherever he played, he made us better. I'm proud, Ben, of what you did on the field. All I can say, you could rake. You could hit with the best of them. He was a, one of the best hitters and most consistent players in the Iowa Conference. I can remember many times where he was kind of the heart of our order and would help uh, you know, drive in key runs. Was named All-Conference a few times, and his name is etched in our record books still to this day a go-getter and was a great leader, led by example. He always was that guy that was going to show up in big games. Had a wonderful passion for the game of baseball. He hit nearly 500 in his uh, postseason at bats. Six or seven games in the conference tournament, including the last game of his career going three for three. And uh, one of the games that I still remember to this day, uh, a heartbreaking four to three loss against our, the evil empire from Waverly. It was awesome to have a front row seat to watch his four-year career at BVU. I knew Ben as a student back in the fall of 2004. He was in my microbiology class. Uh, one of the few people who really got excited on the day when we covered the eye diseases. Um, most of the students were you know, doing this when I was putting the pictures up and there he was, eyes glued to the screen, really excited about eye diseases. And at that point, I, I asked him you know, why he was excited about it. And he said, I'm going to be an optometrist. He took a really rigorous academic course of study. Physics, organic chemistry, coaching volleyball, physiology, molecular biology, coaching baseball and softball. I'm not sure which were the most difficult classes for him, but I'll say, he did pretty well in all of them. I was fortunate enough to have Ben come and work for me as uh, assistant baseball coach here at Storm Lake St. Mary's for several seasons. I'm really impressed with what Ben has accomplished since he left BBU. Going on and getting his doctor of optometry degree, starting his own practice. He's just a great all around guy and just, you know, good person. He's providing cutting edge healthcare for his patients and also providing 
jobs and opportunities for people in his community. My favorite memory about Ben Lichtig, the player, the home series against Dubuque. We're tied in the bottom of the ninth. He leads off with a walk, eventually gets to second base with two outs when Adam Hardy hits a single to center field. And we're gonna send Ben home and it looks like it's gonna be a close play at the plate, except we were wrong. And he was gonna be out by like five steps. And so the catcher's waiting for him to concede the play, give up, just get tagged out. We head to extra innings, except Ben didn't have those thoughts. He proceeds to knock the catcher into the bleachers, drawing the ball free, Ball's on the turf, umpire says safe, Beavers win, we go home winners. And that's what I'll always remember about Ben is he was going to win whatever it took. Ben, just want to again take a moment to congratulate you on this wonderful honor. Uh, you're definitely deserving, definitely one of the most uh, inspiring players that I've had the fortune to coach through the years, whether at the high school level, college level, have appreciated the friendship that we've continued to have through the years and staying connected and whatnot as well. So um, thank you for uh, all that you've done to promote the game of baseball and allowing me to be part of this. Ben, congratulations on being elected to the Buena Vista University Athletics Hall of Fame. I'm really proud of you. Ben, I am so proud of you and, and so happy for you and your induction. Uh, when you committed to us from uh, Bishop Garrigan High School in Algona, you gave us instant credibility. And we were able to attract uh, other local talent simply because I think they wanted to play with you. And what you and your group of teammates have done for uh, the building of this program is something that I appreciate. But more than that, I just enjoyed watching you play and watching you excel in the classroom, set big goals for yourself off the field, and then go out and achieve those goals. So I am not surprised that you are very successful in your occupation out in Massachusetts. And I'm so happy for you and for your family. And uh, again, congratulations on this great award. I should have... Um talk to some of you guys about what you're going to cover because um, it's going to really steal my thunder on my talk here. So, <laughs> But thank you so much for the kind words, Ryan, Coach Edie, and, and Dr. Lensmeyer, and, and certainly Tim. Um, thank you to BV and the Athletic Department for selecting me to be uh, inducted in the Hall of Fame, and congratulations to the other inductees and all the uh, accomplishments that you guys have done as well. Uh, Certainly it's the offensive categories that, that got me here today, and, um, but it, it's, it's a defensive stat that I am certainly most proud of. Um, as we just learned, I was a catcher at Ogona Garrigan, and uh, being a left-handed catcher was a bit unorthodox and a full paw in the game of baseball. And so when Coach Edie recru recruited me to come play here at uh, BV, it was kind of known that I was going to play first base, which completely fine with, I was happy to do it. Um, but by the time that we got to um, my senior year, we found uh, Coach Eddie put me back behind the dish several times, um, which once again, I was happy to do. Um, however, opposing coaches and opposing teams, uh, especially at the collegiate level, would see a left-handed catcher and uh, start licking their chops, thinking that they were going to run all over uh, the base paths on, on you. Um, but the stat that I still loan, although the offensive categories have been toppled, uh, is the lowest stolen base against percentage in BV baseball history. So it, it's a small sample size, but I'm still very proud of it. <laughs> but it just shows the hard work, determination, and grit that you can accomplish anything. Um, and that's very symbolic tonight, uh, because uh, more than two decades later, um, uh, you know, I was an 18-year-old kid just trying to extend my, my baseball playing days um, at that time. Uh, Dr. Lenz Meyer was my microbiology professor, and he was certainly new to the university. And, and Coach Edie was that young coach really trying to um, establish the program here that at that time had seen better days. Um, but, you know, now, all these years later, Dr. Lenz Meyer is the president of the university. I'm getting inducted to the Hall of Fame, and, and Coach Edie has uh, arguably one of the most well-run and consistent uh, baseball programs in the state of Iowa and arguably all of D3, D3 collegiate uh, 
baseball. So um, thank you, Coach Edy, for giving me the opportunity to play for you um, and being a foundational piece of the program that you have built. It is the thing that I am most proud of being a Beaver. Um, the traits that I learned playing baseball here certainly have translated to my professional and personal life. Um, my wife, Kelly, can vouch for that. Uh, she did not know me during my baseball playing days, um, but she can vouch that uh, the hard work and determination and grit still exists in me. Um, I'm not plowing any catchers over anymore, but uh, <laughs> that doesn't translate too well. Um, but she graciously set her career aside while I grew my business uh, with the same core values that the BV program instilled in me. So thank you, Kelly, for, for doing that. Uh, most importantly, I want to thank my mom and dad. Uh, my mom is not here tonight. She's actually in Massachusetts, uh, babysitting our three young girls. Uh, so she certainly took one for the team, but she wishes that she would be here tonight. I wish that she was here as well. Um, my girls do play softball, and yes, I am their coach. Um, but the, my parents' time and energy that they committed to see my brothers and I pursue our passions has not gone unnoticed. Thank you, and I hope to emulate what you did for me to my girls as well. So thank you, Mom and Dad. Thank you, BV, for this honor. Cheers. Our next uh, inductee, Jennifer Stork List, 2007. Like Ben, Jennifer had an older sibling who played the same sport at Buena Vista. Brenda Stork studied accounting and played golf for the Beavers before graduating in 1999. A few years later, along came Jennifer, a Kemper Catholic high school graduate from Litterdale, and if you thought Clark's, Nebraska was small at 320, it's twice the size as Litterdale, Iowa. Uh, Jen sought to study accounting and play golf. She arrived as a freshman and the women's golf team won a conference title. As a sophomore, she finished fourth in the conference. As a junior, she was second. As a senior, she left no doubt as to who was the best golfer in the Iowa conference. She won the conference meet by nine strokes. Shot 75, 76, 77, and 78 to claim the title and MVP honors. She was a two-time All-American, a three-time academic all-conference selection, and a two-time National Golf Coaches Association Scholar American. She's a managing director at Ernst & Young, the firm that she has served for 16 years. She and her husband, Justin List, Justin is a 2007 Beaver grad and a baseball player. They have two children, Hadley and Hayden. And please enjoy a video tribute to Jen. Hi, I'm Janet Berry. I knew Jen because I got to be her coach in the 2006 National Championship Tournaments. I'm Jan Travis, and I had the opportunity to be the Director of Athletics. Hi, my name is Chelsea Beeson. Um, I was a teammate of Jen's at Buena Vista, playing golf together. Hey Jen, congratulations on being selected into the Buena Vista Hall of Fame. You are so well deserving of this honor. During your time at Buena Vista, you were both a standout in the classroom and on the women's golf team. I was really lucky because I got to play with her in so many matches and watch her just compete and, and win so many times. The opportunity to watch her grow as an individual on the course, in the classroom, and just outside is a tremendous experience and very rewarding. I would think back to golfing with Jen and the things that I remember are her drive and determination and leadership. She just really took all those things on the golf course and was able to win so many times. It's very difficult to be in an individual sport to exhibit the skill as a team player, as a team leader, 
and she filled that role extremely well. I think you could ask any of her teammates and they would confirm that. I looked back, tried to find statistics from her senior year, and I don't know if this makes anyone else feel old, but her senior year was the first time that statistics were ever recorded <laughs> online, and so it was fun to look back though. I remember her winning the conference tournament, playing four just outstanding rounds of golf, winning as a team at Loris together, some fun memories. You accomplished a lot while you were here. One of the most amazing things that you did is you qualified for nationals as an individual not once but twice. That is very difficult to do. And in 2006, Jan Travis, our AD at the time, came to me and asked if I would be your coach during that national tournament. So you and I took off for Howie the Hills in Florida and you competed for two days of a practice round and four days of competition. Competing in Florida, it is hot, it is humid. You had to deal with thunderstorms. We got pulled off the course. We had to go back out in adverse conditions. Yes, there were alligators out on the course, but I had a front row seat to not only what a great golf game you had, but also your character. There was one hole that absolutely gave you fits every single day, but one particular day, it really got gotcha. you. For a lot of people, they would have turned to the back nine and just kind of thrown in the towel. Athletics builds character, but we also know it also reveals it. But what I saw of your character that day, you went out and grinded out one of the best nines that you had all tournament after you had just an absolutely really rough hole. I'll never forget that, Jen, because I've seen a lot of sports, I've seen a lot of competition, and that was an outstanding round of golf that you put together at the end of the day. I was honored to be able to walk step for step with you during that competition. Not only was she a stellar student athlete on the course, she was likewise in the classroom. She gave all that she had in both endeavors. I really think she has taken those qualities into her life. Outstanding, successful career at Ernst & Young as a managing director. But what I think personally is really cool is her work that she's done with First Tee. In the greater Des Moines area, especially with young girls, we got to reconnect a couple years ago about that project. and. She's doing some amazing things there. It's an organization for young girls learning to golf, and they are so lucky to get to work with Jen. I just think it's really gonna make a difference in, you know, to a lot of young girls' lives, and especially in the game of golf. One memory I have of Jen is her desire to always birdie the 18th hole. And I think that came from her dad, um, but I just remember always trying to birdie the 18th hole. And I think that just shows so much about Jen because she always wants to finish strong and she always wants to impress. And I think that she's done that so well in her life. And I always, when I'm golfing, I always think about her and think about birdie in the 18th green. You couldn't find a better candidate than Jennifer. She is so deserving of this award. Jen, being into the Hall of Fame is a big deal and you deserve it. Jennifer, it is a great honor for me to say congratulations to you. Thank you for all that you have given through sports and to our young people coming forward to support the game of golf. Congratulations, Jen, on your induction in the Buena Vista University Athletics Hall of Fame. Welcome to the Buena Vista Hall of Fame. Man, you guys really got me there with the first tea stuff. I wasn't expecting that, so thank you. Um, uh, truly, thank you for this incredible honor. I really do feel privileged to stand before you today, and I do want to say congratulations to all of my um, fellow inductees. I'm super impressed by everything that you accomplished in your time here at BVU. First and foremost, I would like to thank my family, um, specifically my parents, um, for all of their support through all the years. Um, it was constant. It was unwavering. Um, they were there all the time. I think, in fact, my parents only missed um, maybe two matches or two tournaments throughout my entire career at EY. So if that's a really a testament to their dedication and time that they put into uh, my golfing career. Um, they always made sure that I had the equipment that I needed, which if anyone plays golf, that's not an easy thing to do because it's not a cheap sport to play. Um, and they were always there to be my biggest fans. Um, Chelsea was right, and I actually had that as a part of my speech. My dad was always someone who said, you want to finish strong, and you should try to birdie the ninth and 18th hole of every tournament that you can. So I'm glad I was able to do that um, from time to time throughout my career. 
Uh, thank you to BVU um, for giving me the opportunity to play this game that I love. Um, my coaches, teammates, and professors um, were amazing. They pushed me to be my best. They pushed me outside my comfort zone, and I'm truly grateful um, for all of that and, and the memories that I was able to make with them. I won't forget all the long van rides that we had to tournaments, many, many trips to te Texas Roadhouse uh, with the you know, cinnamon butter and the rolls. That was always a, a constant staple for us when we went to tournaments. Um, and all the celebrations that we got to have after many wins that we uh, got to experience throughout my career. The game of golf is really a remarkable teacher, and I don't think I fully appreciated that when I was playing at the time, um, but as I look back on my career, there's really a lot of life lessons that I've learned from the game of golf. It teaches us patience when we're facing obstacles and challenges. Um, it teaches us the importance of honesty when you have to mark down your score and count every stroke, even though you don't want to sometimes. Um, it teaches us respect when we compete against others, and it teaches us perseverance when we're striving to improve our game. And all of those are life lessons that have certainly helped me in my professional career, or not professional golf, but in my profession. Um, and it also doesn't hurt to be one of a few females in the business world who can hold her own on the golf course. And now I get the chance to chase my kids around um, and on the golf course and give back to the game as much as I can. Um, I'm involved in the First Tee Central Iowa because it teaches life lessons through the game of golf, and I'm very honored to be able to be in a position to give back. Um, I get to play quite a bit uh, more than I maybe anticipated I would, and there's always a competition in my house, especially with my husband, for who gets the lowest handicap in the house, which is me currently. So. Um, <laughs> Thank you again um, for this recognition. I'm really humbled and honored um, to be a part of the Hall of Fame. So thank you. Our final individual inductee this evening is Sean Olorandami. And there's a bit of a trend line with Sean. Uh, with our three of our Hall of Famers tonight, Sean is the third one in a row who came to BV after a sibling visited and matriculated to Buena Vista. But with Sean, it was his younger sister who showed the way. Natalie Orlorandami Hughes, who is a year younger, had gone to Iowa State and she wanted something more in her collegiate experience. She came to tour Buena Vista, perhaps perhaps at the suggestion of a Central Iowa track enthusiast named Dennis Young. Dennis is here tonight. It's great to see you, Dennis. He's one of our life trustees. Sean was at home on break from the University of Iowa. He hopped in the car with his sister and their parents. He came along for the tour. He enrolled and he ended up excelling. 14 all-conference honors. He was an indoor and an outdoor All-American. He still holds or is part of seven school records. Sean teaches English at North High School in Sioux City. He and his wife, Mary, who was inducted into the Morningside University Hall of Fame last weekend, have a five-year-old and a three-year-old, and they have twin boys coming in December. They are also the two of them state champion dance coaches. Sean's boys dance teams at North High have won four state titles and two national titles. There is a dance happening afterwards. <laughs> so we'll take a listen now to a video prepared for Sean's induction. Good evening, everyone, and especially you, Sean. I'm Eric Bertelson, teammate of Sean, good friend of Sean, and the best man of Sean. He was in my wedding, and I was in his. I am Natalie Olerandami Hughes, and I am Sean's sister. My name is Dennis Young, a track enthusiast. My name's somewhere on that campus around a track facility. Sean has worked very hard his whole life, really, for track specifically. When we were in high school, it wasn't necessarily right off the bat. And actually, I know he didn't think he would go to college to run track. We have to recognize your sister, Natalie. Obviously, she was not paid enough for recruiting you. 
Sean came because of Natalie. I had gone to Iowa State, Sean had gone to Iowa, and I wanted to transfer to BV, but I wanted my brother to come with me, and I knew he wasn't enjoying Iowa. So I kind of half take credit for this because <laughs> I got Sean to come back to BV. Everybody thought we were either married or twins when we started at BV, so it was actually really funny to be like, oh, no, we're not married, <laughs> we're not twins, but we are siblings. Sean, I first met you, uh, I think it was an indoor meet, you were lying under a blanket, and I thought, my, this kid must be shy. I hope he's competitive, but once you got out from under that blanket and got on the track, little did we know you were gonna turn out to be the best high hurdler in Buena Vista track and field history by far by the greatest hurdler we've had at BV. I actually qualified for nationals first. And of course, our family was new to this. We didn't know what any of it meant. So none of my family members went and watched me. Nobody came. Then Sean realized what nationals meant. Everything kicked in the gear. Uh, he came to nationals with Natalie and I. When Sean found out there were medals and real awards, and you could become an All-American. He was like, oh, this is the real deal. That next year, both of us grew big time. He motivated me, I motivated him. So then that next year he qualified and sure enough, the whole family goes, everybody supports Sean. It was like, I didn't matter that first year. <laughs> I had confidence every time you got on the track, you were gonna win the race. He was phenomenal. He was a technician. The highlights for me of your career uh, was the indoor nationals at Terre Haute where you finished uh, second. You were the national runner-up. I think you were only, you lost that race by less than three inches. It was just that close. He always wanted to be the best. The number of records that you hold, the 55 hurdles, the 60 hurdles, indoor four by two, outdoor four by one, the outdoor four by two. I remember the uh, Wartburg indoor. I thought it was the Burleson Ola and Dami takeover of that meet. You won uh, a 400 meter heat. That old colleague of yours, Burleson, ran in the next one and just barely beat you and you finished 1-2 in the 400. Between you and Eric Burleson, you finished fourth in the nation, which is the highest of Buena Vista men's team has ever, has ever finished. Uh, one race that uh, you and I know uh, Eric Burleson didn't like to talk about, but you beat him in the in an indoor 200 meter race. Um, I sometimes thought you thought that was maybe the highlight of your track career instead of some of the other records. Very quiet, confident human, phenomenal. Sean has just always been my biggest supporter also. I never saw, Sean and I never competed. We never competed. It was his race and it was my race and we both were there supporting each other equally. I'd hold his blocks, he'd hold my blocks. And I remember Sean ordering track spikes and he ordered the wrong color. They were red, navy, and gold. I don't know if that was on purpose or on accident, but still to this day, he's known as the, the red spikes. He was blazing fast in those. You have a sense of humor, sometimes a little sarcastic edge to it, and uh, you pick on me once in a while, and I've always, always enjoyed it. It's just been a pleasure to get to know you, not just from the track and field, but on a personal basis. He was the best man at my wedding. I was the best man for his wedding. He will not answer a phone call or a text, but when we do get to talk on the phone, we'll talk for a good hour, and it goes by super fast. He is basically like the protective older brother to me, and he always has been. Well, Sean, uh, once again, congratulations on being inducted into Buena Vista's Hall of Fame. Uh, it's so worthy. You proved yourself. And probably what I'm most proud of is the, uh, the person you've become, an outstanding husband and father. I was privileged to attend your wedding. And you did marry up. God bless you, Mary. Sean, congratulations. Having you at BV meant <laughs> the world to me, and I could not imagine a better college experience than the one you and I got to have together. You are so deserving of this and I am so proud of you, Sean. Congratulations, Sean. Welcome to the Hall of Fame. It's about time. I knew that's it. I knew I was gonna get, I knew this was gonna happen.
Okay. <laughs> um, I want to thank the committee for feeling me worthy of this um, honor and the uh, athletic staff who put together this night, the banquet staff, such a beautiful evening. I started at Iowa. I did not do fantastic there because you have to go to class to do fantastic there. <laughs> I was not particularly good at that, so I um, came to VV where I had a lot more success. Um, and looking back with some distance and time now, I can see that that excess um, was due to the knowledge I was getting from the professors I had, um, coupled with the technical skills of the coaching staff who gifted me with their time, um, and supported by the athletes that sharpened my um, skills on the team. Um, these things created a special alchemy that led to my success um, and to this honor tonight. So I'd like to take some time to thank those individuals, um, the faculty, those formidable minds who gifted me with some of the knowledge and experience and wisdom that they had accumulated in their years. Um, in particular, I'd like to thank Dr. Ann Peterson, um, Dr. Anna Maria Formicella, Dr. Jim McFadden, Dr. Kay Siebler, and the late um, Dr. Hollis Drake and Doc Whitlatch, who taught me not only ideas, but how to think. I'm forever appreciative of them. Um, I'd like to thank my coaches, Brett Carney, um, Nick Moss, Coach Taylor, Jim Nichols, Rachel Jansen, and um, Renetta Seiler, who gave me the skills needed to be successful. And of course, my teammates, many of which are here tonight, um, Bert, Chris Rowether, Rowether um, Justin Bauer, um, not here, Tanner Russ, and um, Jason Taylor, or Justin Taylor, my hurdling partners, who um, pushed me as iron sharpens iron and we made each other better. And of course, my sister, who I'm not gonna look at, um, <laughs> um, who brought me here and who I needed as much as she needed me. Um, together, these groups came together to make me who I was here at BV. Um, I had good coaches, I had wonderful professors, fantastic teammates, but um, the instruments can be beautifully crafted, the musicians expertly skilled, the composition masterfully written, but if there isn't a maestro, a conductor to bring it together, we'll never get a symphony, we'll never get music. And Dennis Young, you were, for so many of us, the conductor for us of our time here at BV. Our coaches changed every year. The ADs changed, the university president changed, our teammates changed, but you remained and still remain a constant at Buena Vista Track and Field. We have thanked you individually for the things you've done, a meal here, an experience there, and they are individually impactful and powerful, but their meaning goes beyond that. They are meaningful on their own, but they had meaning beyond that. A friendship I sparked at one of your dinners, which has led to a lifelong friendship that has impacted my life in a thousand different ways, the best man at my wedding. The experiences I tried to give my athletes when I coached, trying to walk in your footsteps and hear them say the things that they say about this dinner we had and this trip we went on, all thanks to you. The, me even wanting to be a coach to give kids those experiences where I would eventually meet my wife um, and marry her and have our two kids with the two on the way. It was meaning that beget meaning and it was all because of you. And so I wanna say thank you again and publicly for what you did for me, for what you did for so many of us because without you, I know full well that without you conducting our experience here at Buena Vista, I would not be here today giving this speech and our college experience would not have been what it was. So thank you so much, Tess. To my parents, they followed us across the country. They encouraged us and supported us in whatever way we needed. Well, they followed me anyway, my sister over there. <laughs> To my mom, who I 
cannot watch an old track video now because she is screaming so impossibly loud in the back room, in the background, <laughs> cheering for me, loving me, to my dad, who is so, so weird. <laughs> My dad is, he's from Africa. That's why I have that last name. And um, he would do and say a lot of things that were just strange when we were growing up. He um, hit a deer one time on his way home from work and he just put it in the trunk and he brought it into the basement and just slit that thing right open. And it just, the guts and the smell, it's, if you're eight years old, it's very, um, and he just cooked parts of it over the week in the oven, and my mom was not thrilled at that decision. And, um, that was not the only time he did that. <laughs> so when he would do and say things, a lot of times we would just say, it's because he's from Africa, because he's different. The very first track meet I ever had was in sixth grade. It was an intramural track meet. And he took me to the track to practice and um, told me that he still got goosebumps when he got on the track, and that someday I would feel that. We might call it um, God or the divine or source or our ground of being or spirit. Um, there is an animating force emanating through every corner and quirk of this creation. And the artists and the craftsmen and the, the theologians and the philosophers all have their antennas tuned to it in various frequencies and aspects of that divine to create art, to create an idea, to come up with an insight. But we athletes get it too. We have our antennas attuned to the divine to create movement. My dad was the first person to teach me to commune, and I do say commune with the divine in that way. He always knew we were going to be runners, and he would take us out to the front yard or to some field, and we would take our shoes off, bare skin on the earth, and he would say, show me how fast you can run. And we would run as fast as we could, and that divine moved in us. to channel the beauty of that divine into motion and delight and its boundless movement, to feel and inhabit the fullness of yourself. And that which is beyond yourself. What a gift you gave us, death. That feeling you described that day, I have felt many times since then. Like sound waves vibrating through sand and the sand dances. It is an exciting anticipation for what your body can do, the potential and the possibility and the potency of that movement that we have all felt. Thank you for that gift, Dad. I still feel that today, what you described. I can't do any of the things I could do with it before, but I do still feel it. If you've seen me in spandex or go over a hurdle, you know it's not the same, but <laughs> I feel it. And so I thank you, Dad, for what you gave to us. I thank the faculty here for giving me this mind to go in this body. The coaches for giving me the technical skill and my teammates for sharpening those skills. And my family for your love, which imparts meaning to all of that. What an honor to be the product of so many's work and to be inducted into this Hall of Fame. So thank you and congratulations to all the other inductees, thank you.
Thank you, Sean. Congratulations. Buena Vista University Athletics honors the 1983 Beaver softball team with induction into the Hall of Fame. The 1983 team won a pair of conference titles in both the Iocota Conference and the Iowa Conference, which for the first time hosted conference play for women. The team traveled to Norman, Oklahoma to start the season and split a double header with the University of Iowa. The Beavers then defeated the reigning NAIA national champions, Missouri Western. Following a loss in their Iowa Conference opener to Central, <laughs> the team proceeded to win the next 11 for an Iowa Conference crown and Buena Vista all with an 11-1 record. Uh, Buena Vista also won the Iacota with an 8-2 record. Lori Stern was named the league MVP. She was a senior, and she was one of eight all-conference all players. Buena Vista then won the rest West Regional. Trenton State defeated the Beavers to open national tournament play, but the Beavers then won three straight, including a 4-2 victory over number one ranked Eastern Connecticut State. In the finals, Buena Vista beat Trenton State 1-0 in eight innings, and that set up a winner-take-all finale. Trenton State won the national crown with a 6-0 verdict in that contest. The Beavers finished 30-9 overall. Stern was second-team All-American. Chanel Finzen, a junior, was 16-3 overall and had a 1.21 ERA. The national runner-up finish was the best ever for a team at BV to that point, and it would be topped one year later by many of these same student athletes as they won the 1984 Division III National Softball Championship. Tonight, 40 years after they competed, the 1983 conferences, that's plural, and NCAA West Region champions and the national runners-up take their rightful place in our Athletics Hall of Fame. Coach Marge Willitson had said previously that this team had four wonderful components, pitching, hitting, defense, and they were all highly motivated as student athletes. I'll now ask Coach Willitson to step forward if she could, and I'll ask the members of the 1983 team to also come forward, assemble here, and I will do, uh, we'll do quick introductions of each player, your name, your position. Come on up. And then we'll turn the podium over to Marge. All right, so your name, uh, what position you play, where you reside now, and what you do or what you did for a career. I'm Joy Johnson Gross. I was the DH on this team. Um, I live in Manila, an hour south. I teach special education and have coached uh, softball for the last 38 years, and it's been a great time every day. I'm Shelly Barr Tierhark. Um, I currently live in Algona, and I uh, spent 34 years teaching, and I was volleyball coach, softball coach during my time. I'm Jill Walquist. I played first base. Uh, I'm from Main Grove. I watch us up the road here. I work from home, and some people think I'm a principal at a school because my email has principal in it, but I work for the company, the principal financial. <laughs> Get that cleared up. <laughs> I'm Cheryl Book. I work at Westwood Community Schools for the last 38 years. I coach cross country, archery, and girls track, and I played infield. I'm Ann Maskey Skellinger, and I taught for 25 years, and now I'm a pharmacist assistant or tech, and. Um, 
I live in Lake Mills. Um, Lisa Henry Dreyer. Um, I was one of the catchers. I live in Manning, Iowa. I just retired at 39 years as being a teacher and coached many, many sports programs at Exira EHK School District. I'm Kelly Abbott. I am, uh, was played in outfield. I'm currently from uh, Story City, Iowa right now, and I spent the last uh, 35 so years in social services. I'm Jolene Denny Boca. Uh, my friends call me Deli, but in this jacket, you call me Barbie Deli. <laughs> <laughs> or if you don't like me, you call me Pepco Deli. <laughs> uh, I was a second baseman, um, and after I left BB, I married my husband Stuart, and our, then our son Cody graduated from BB, and then I spent 39 years as a teacher and a coach because of Marge Wilson. I'm Libby Kestel, and I was originally from Storm Lake. When I left BB, or I was catcher too. When I left BB, um, I went down to the University of Iowa for physical therapy school and worked there for the next 35 years after I graduated um, and was the director of rehab therapies down there. I'm Libby Kestel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jackie Jerkovich. I'm from Council of Iowa. I was the center fielder. I do physical security for a banking group in southwest Iowa, and I'm a lot tougher than I look. <laughs> That's not a joke, either. <laughs> My name is Jill Petzl. I play right field for the Beavers, um, number 19. Jackie and I both are wearing our numbers tonight. Um, I am a major gift officer at Grinnell College. I've been doing development and advancement work most of my career, and yeah, glad to be here. Everybody needs to share their nicknames too, but I was Pets, so that was my nickname. <laughs> I'm Judy Sherman, I play third base, I live in Arizona, and I was in the training. Retirement's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Laura Stern, I played left field, and I retired from the professions of parks and recreation. So, retired. <laughs> I'm Chanel Benton, pitcher. I'm currently living in Indianapolis, and I work for a company called Ingredion, where we make and manufacture two million pounds a day of food-grade cornstarch. Uh, so we're very appreciative of all the farmers, and I can say I'm literally from this area where we have proud farming to come from. Well, good evening. I'm really honored to be here tonight. It's uh, so much fun for me to come back so many times to Buena Vista University. I spent the entire uh, part of my career here, 20, 28 years coaching these young ladies and uh, also coaching tennis. And I want to congratulate those other inductees tonight and my players for entering the Hall of Fame. It's a very, very prestigious honor, and the memories that you make here tonight will last you for a lifetime. And I never get tired of coming to this event, so I hope, Amy, that you find other ways for me to get back. Sure. <laughs> I'd also like to uh, thank the Hall of Fame Committee for selecting the 1983 softball team into, the, uh, into this prestigious organization. It's an honor very well deserved and I couldn't be happier for this group of young ladies. Oh, I shouldn't say young anymore, should I? <laughs> yep. I don't know about that. It's really hard to believe that 40 years ago, this all took place. So they were all kind of asking me, now how old were you when, when we started in 83? Well, you know, they were, they were just 20s, and I was probably 40. So if you add 40 and 40, what's that make me going to be in December? <laughs> so it just seems like yesterday that Rusty and I were out practicing on the field, and I was a very young and inexperienced coach. I had no idea what these players might accomplish, and let alone that they would have a spot in the history of Buena Vista University. And many people just dream about doing something like that, but they actually live their dream. And to finish as the NCAA Division III runner-up in softball was quite a feat. 
And I think it's remarkable that they, they won that. Second in the nation, yeah, it's not first, but it's pretty darn good in my book. And I think they paved the way for the national championship team in 1984. It was their presence on the field. Many of these players were on the 84 team. And I believe they established a tradition of excellence for our softball program here at Buena Vista. There were five seniors on that team who did not get to enjoy the 1984 national championship experience. However, I think they were very, very instrumental in setting the stage for the 84 team. They had leadership, they had dedication, and determination. And that fed to the younger players, and they became their role models, and that's what made them, I think, that team, this team, and the following team so good. Please help me recognize the five seniors that we have here tonight. And you might wave again in case they forgot your name. Uh, these five seniors did not get to experience the national championship. They were Judy Sherburn, Judy, Jolene Danny, Cheryl Peck, Lisa Henry, and Lori Stern. It's very fitting that they will now become Hall of Fame honorees. It's also important that we remember two team members who are not with us any longer. They passed away and they will always have a special place in our hearts. All-American pitcher Sam Meyer, she was the pitcher of the final championship game in 1984. She still holds the record at Buena Vista for the lowest ERA ever at BV with a .90. Melissa Landsness, who was from Peterson, her daughter was supposed to be here tonight to accept her award, but uh, could not make it with some family commitments. Our thoughts and prayers go out to Cheryl Peck, whose father passed away on Wednesday of a heart attack. Cheryl was a second baseman. She was a Storm Lake native. She currently lives in Grimes, and she was so looking forward to being here tonight. She has our deepest sympathy at this difficult time. We did see her today for lunch, and uh, she wanted to be here, but at this time, it just wasn't possible. As I thought about tonight and what we might be able to say or what could be said to give you a sense of the personality of this team and why they were so successful, I thought it would be fun for you to hear some of the uh, comments that they uh, put forth to me just recently. One that comes to mind is the uh, infamous dirt room. How many in this room remember the dirt room? Oh, one person might. <laughs> well, the dirt room was located on the bottom floor of Siebens Field House. It's now our current athletic training room. It actually had dirt. We had a batting cage in there. It had very poor lighting, smelled a little musty. Um, I thought it was a pretty unique opportunity for a good practice facility. But I'm not sure their comments reflect kind of what I thought. <laughs> Here are some of their comments. I would think the dirt room could have had some NIL love from a hazmat company. Ha, <laughs> huh, pretty sure we all have black lung disease. God only knows what lurked in the shadows of the dirt room. I was going to file a class action lawsuit about that. <laughs> so that was the dirt room. I'm glad it's gone. But we did, we had a lot of good times down there. It was pretty dark and dingy. And then another person uh, commented that uh, they thought we were successful because the players had to ride, ride behind Lori Stern's car as we drug our field. We played out behind Puffs. We had to drag her and mark our own field. So Lori had a little bitty car. What was that, Lori? Uh, Volkswagen? A little Volkswagen. So it fit perfectly to, to drag the diamond. Another individual commented, we were a group of highly competitive individuals. It was our talent because we had the best battery in the country. These are all their good reasons. We loved each other like a big family. It was just raw talent and are really maybe Chanel's pitching arm. <laughs> and this last one here that, uh, I'm not sure I ought to tell you this. 
But they said, Marge, I think it was the purse. <laughs> and you don't know the infamous purse story, but I went to, I was kind of inexperienced, you know. Didn't really know what I was doing. I had my purse on my shoulder when I went up to home plate <laughs> to do the, uh, <laughs> the lineups. They have never, ever let me forget that, <laughs> ever. And actually, you know what, in this room tonight, my purse kind of disappeared. <laughs> Luckily, somebody very nice gave it back to me, Carrie Weddle. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, yeah, anyway. Okay, the last one here, too, is um, we all got along great, and Marge, you were fun and easy to play for. If you wanted us to do a drill or a play, and we didn't want to, we would just tell you, no, we're not doing it. <laughs> And a little side note on that, um, many of my famous drills came from baseball books <laughs> because there weren't any softball coaching books back in that day. So I would dream up all these drills, I'd get to practice and we'd start doing it. They'd say, coach, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> okay, well, how do you wanna do it then? So we had to, you know, I had to, I had to learn this game kind of by hook and crook. Another person said it had to be Libby's brilliance behind the plate and her charming personality dealing with the umpires breathing down her neck. <laughs> Another one, we were tough and scrappy and hated to lose. Another one said, I think going to the Cowboy Museum in Oklahoma was a big inspiration. <laughs> we always kind of had a knack for trying to do things. I've taken them to firefighters museums, uh, Maritime Museum in Connecticut, the Cowboy Museum in Oklahoma, the JFK where he was shot. It's, so they have a lot of stories about that. Many of us came from programs that were not necessarily the best, but we were all highly motivated. We drew confidence from each other. Everyone had a job, knew what it was, and just did it. And lastly, for their comments, I don't know if you remember the beaver vans. I know golf did, and that's what we traveled in all the time. Well, the beaver vans had a sign that said, here come the beavers, there go the beavers. <laughs> and it was pretty dorky, I think. <laughs> <laughs> now, a little bit about my perspective of why I think we were so successful. Number one, these players had a love for the game that motiva motivated them to work very, very hard and to play very, very hard. They were determined, they were confident, competitive, and they didn't know the meaning of quit. They just really loved playing the game. They had a lot of fun playing the game. They also had exceptional athletic talent. Eight players still rank in the top 10 career records in 20 categories at Buena Vista. They are Lori, Libby, Jackie, Judy, Susan, Joy, Sam, and Chanel. Five first-team all-conference players, Chanel, Jackie, Judy, Lori, and Jill, and three second-team all-conference, Joy, Libby, and Susan. We also had the conference MVP, as Tim mentioned, and second-team All-American, Lori Stern. The very next year, three players were named All-Americans, and six earned first team all conference. So they just were grooming themselves to get to the next level. Did they always get along? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they lie a lot too. <laughs> no, they didn't always get along. But once they walked through the gate at the field, the competitive spirit took over and nothing could get in the way of their trying to win a game. Um, giving up was just never an option for this team. My second reason here is I think a lot of our success was because of a man named Rusty Moeller. Rusty was our assistant coach. He probably taught you, didn't he, Lisa? And he was very well known for working with young coaches around the community. He came up to me in my first couple years of coaching and said, hey Marge, would, would you like to have a little help with coaching? And I said, yeah, Rusty, I sure would. And that was the best decision I probably ever, ever made in terms of softball. He knew the strategy, he knew the techniques, he knew how to motivate these players, and he, he just uh, had a knack for putting a lot of fun into the game. And girls, you remember what his uh, 
Favorite saying was after we won a game? Five o'clock somewhere? No. <laughs> beer 30. Beer 30. <laughs> it was always beer 30 after a good game. So Rusty really, I think, had a tremendous influence on our softball program. For 25 years, he and I coached together, never paid him a dime. He just loved doing it. And unfortunately, he was not with us when we won the national championship or the second place. He, was, he had to work, you know, he had a real job, so he did have to work. But he just loved the game, and I think he instilled that love of the game into each one of these players, and into me as well. And lastly, there's many factors, I think, that go into building a strong team. I sincerely believe that success comes from developing meaningful, meaningful relationships between teammates and their coaches. It's also about trust, believing in one another, and caring more about team goals than their individual goals. It, they always would strive to make a person better on the field. This team exemplifies all of those characteristics. Yes, winning's gratifying and it's fun, but it's the relationship that you make by being a part of a team that really makes a difference. I think that their friendships that they made on this team really, uh-oh, who did it? <laughs> That's Libby, Libby did it. But I think their relationships with each other really, really contributed to the success of our team. And I thank you from my heart and soul for letting me be your coach. But most of all, I thank you for your gift of friendship. The older I get, the more I value our friendship. You've given me so many special memories. I wish I could go back and do it all over again. And when I go to the nursing home, <laughs> I want you to be sure and still call me when I'm there. You're a special group, and I thank you for being a part of my life and teaching me so much about this game. And now it's my pleasure to introduce the 1983 softball team into the Buena Vista Hall of Fame. And examine this graphic with some of the things that we've got uh, coming up, including a beaver ball at the Iowa Event Center on February 24th. It's a new, it's an init initiative that our Alumni Relations and Development Office is undertaking. We'll present our alumni awards and we'll have a dinner and a dance and it'll be in Des Moines. And we'd also love it for all of you to keep BV and to keep the BV Club in your thoughts. Your charitable gifts to BV and to the BV Club ensure that we can continue to update equipment, make travel accommodations, provide what we need to do to keep pace with competing institutions. Your support means the world to the student athletes whose shoes you were in not that long ago. Really appreciate your consideration and we congratulate all of you on your enshrinement tonight in the Buena Vista Athletics Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. Thank you.